This is a story wrapped in a story. How St. Nicholas came to be Santa Claus and how a little girl's belief in him changed her mother's destiny after her father reads a story from an unusual encyclopedia he called the Book of Santa. It's Christmas Eve. Jill Crawford has been hospitalized and in a coma for weeks after a near-fatal car accident. Her husband, Steve, has returned home after spending several nights in his wife's hospital room. He greets their six-year-old daughter, Natalie, and after settling up with the babysitter, retires with her to the living room. There, a crackling fireplace, decorated Christmas tree, and sofa await. Natalie sits next to her father and asks a very poignant question. Did God make Santa? It's evident this hits Steve hard. He leans back and without expression stares across the room where something catches his attention. He replies, of course, then steps to a bookshelf and pulls out an encyclopedia. Here it is, the book of Santa, he says, as he opens the book to a page about migrating birds. As if reading from the pages, he begins reciting a story of how growing up in Nazareth, a young Nicholas and Jesus Christ became best of friends. Soon they both realized each had a different destiny to fulfill. Jesus' destiny was his teachings and sacrifice on the cross. Nicholas's was to make sure no one ever forgot Jesus. So God created a workshop at the top of the world, endowed Nicholas as an immortal, and gave him an eternal task. In celebration of Jesus' birth, he would travel the earth on a single night each year, delivering joy to the children and spreading goodwill to all. We follow Steve's story of how Nicholas transformed from a poor toy maker's son to a beloved saint to the Santa Claus we know today. Little did he know that his story was true. This reading picks up near the end of the story, after Steve finished reading the book of Santa and Natalie had fallen asleep. He places the book on a coffee table, stands and gently lifts his sleeping daughter from the sofa. As he does, a letter to Santa falls under the sofa without Steve's notice. It reads, Dear Santa, don't bring me any toys this year. I'd rather have my mommy home for Christmas. But please stop by anyway for milk and cookies. Signed, Natalie. Steve, carrying his daughter, disappears up the stairs. A moment later, Natalie's letter begins to inexplicably flutter. It flies into the fireplace and disappears up the flue. Natalie's letter bursts from the chimney, completely unscathed without a single scorch mark. It rides the wind as it passes suburban homes, all lit with colorful Christmas lights and decorations, some with folks singing Christmas carols in the front yard. The letter continues toward the city skyline in the distance, passing a Christmas tree lot with a family buying one of the few remaining trees. It flutters past a well-lit frozen pond where skaters are gliding effortlessly around the edges while others climb a nearby hill and ride their sleds to the bottom. As the letter closes in on the city, it flies up and over across on a church steeple. Below, folks are gathering around a manger scene while others head inside. A huge sign atop a skyscraper that reads Central Hospital comes into view. The letter changes course and heads straight toward the building. It drops down to street level, dodging a horse-drawn sleigh and popping over the long lines of last-minute shoppers crossing the street in both directions. The letter comes to an intersection with a sign that also reads Central Hospital. It floats over to the building and flies straight up the wall. A black mitten with a white fur cuff and a bright red sleeve opens against the backdrop of the night stars. Natalie's letter gently lands in the open mitten, which closes and snatches the letter from view. A nurse slowly walks down a long hall, casually glancing into the open doors of each patient's room. She looks into Jill's room, abruptly stops and looks again. Standing beside the bed with his back toward the door is someone dressed like Santa Claus who's leaning over Jill with his hand on her forehead. The nurse politely says, excuse me, visiting hours are over. No response. With a bit more of a stern voice, she says, hey Santa Claus, this is ICU, you're not supposed to be here. Still no response. The nurse looks down the hall at another nurse sitting at a workstation. 
Better call security, she says with a cautioning voice. When the nurse looks back into the room, Jill is still in bed, but Santa is gone and the window is open. She snaps her head back toward the station and yells, Call now! The nurse runs into the room and begins examining Jill. A moment later, a second nurse enters, followed by the security guard, who immediately steps to the window. Both nurses attend to Jill as something outside catches the guard's attention. He leans to the window and gawks. The reindeer and sleigh hover only a few feet from the building. Santa, Nicholas, is taking his seat when he notices the guard staring at him. He winks at the guard as he salutes, then grabs the reins, gives them a snap and whistles. In an instant, the sleigh rockets into the night sky. The first nurse turns to the guard, who looks totally dumbfounded. Did you see something, she asks? Huh? You whistled. No, I didn't, the guard replied. Jill's eyes open. The attending nurse yells, she's awake. The first nurse quickly steps back to the bed and both nurses help Jill as she begins to sit up. Take it slow, Jill, the nurse says in a calming voice. Jill sits up effortlessly as the nurses reposition her bed and pillows. How do you feel, a nurse asks. Jill blinks her eyes as she looks at each nurse. I, I feel fine. Actually, really refreshed, she replies. With a wrinkled brow, she gazes around the room, then back to the nurses. Did I just see Santa Claus, she asks. From across the room, the guard says, yes, you did. We see a forward view from behind the sleigh as Nicholas guides the reindeer around tall buildings. Another great job, well done, boys. Let's go home, he tells the reindeer. Jesus now sits beside Nicholas. In unison, they both lean back and prop their feet on the front of the sleigh. Nicholas gazes at Jesus. Thank you so much for that, he says with sincerity. That was the best gift I've ever delivered. Jesus smiles. You're very welcome. Oh, you big time anyway, and besides, Jill was going to make a full recovery eventually. But you made it happen tonight, my friend, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. Jesus smiles, then casts his gaze forward at the gorgeous night sky. And happy birthday, Nicholas continues. You're what, 2,000-something this year? Younger than you, Jesus exclaims indignantly. That's right. No matter how old you get, I'll always be older. Ho, 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 Jesus says with a grin. Both men burst into laughter as the sleigh turns and disappears among the twinkling stars.